Hey everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Chip Lap and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials on YouTube and Facebook. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on any of our tutorials. Tonight's design tutorial is a quick and easy process to create a textured or drawn in the sand type of look uh, with you can do it with different shapes or text, whatever it is that your heart desires. We're going to be working in Affinity Photo today, but you can follow the same steps for the most part in Affinity Designer as well. If you enjoy this tutorial tonight, be sure to check out the Affinity Photo Digital Graphic Design Masterclass for Sublimation. This is a 75 hour video course that is beginner friendly and super in depth. It teaches you all about the different tools and capabilities of Affinity Photo, in, including photo editing and roster-based design creation, um, as well as topography and creating completed designs all within the software. Throughout the course, there are interactive design challenges with opportunities to win prizes, and there's also one-on-one -on -one email support if you need help along the way. Our master classes do not require any knowledge beforehand. We will teach you everything so that you can feel confident using this software for anything your heart might dream up. There's a link below and you can use the code sub that to save $30. Let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to need a couple of elements from my favorite resource site, Creative Fabrica. I wanted to go ahead and start with downloading some sand texture digital papers. Now, if you can find a straightforward stock photo of sand, you could use that. You could also use a picture of sand that you've taken yourself. Um, I find that using digital papers really is the easiest way to achieve that baseline texture result that I want for projects like this. So. I have linked this below in the description if you are interested in downloading this little texture pack. I thought this was a good one. It had plenty of diversity, so I went ahead and snagged that underneath my Creative Fabrica membership. Now, you also are going to want a good font choice. Technically, you can use any font you would like for this, but I always like to choose fonts that go with the aesthetic that we are creating. And in this case, that is a drawn in the sand with a stick or finger type of look. So I've downloaded this sugar sand font for that purpose. I think it's gonna give us a good effect. Both of these links are in the video description. I have a Creative Fabrica membership and it is my absolute favorite for all of the resources that I can imagine, particularly fonts and digital papers. That's the number one things that I download from here. If you don't have a membership and are interested in trying it out, you can sign up for $1 using the link below. Let's click back over to Affinity Photo and get started. The first thing we want to do is open a new document by going to File and then New. I'm just going to choose my standard clip art size for this. That's 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels with my DPI set to 300. For sublimation, our color format should always be RGB slash 8 with the color profile sRGB IEC 61966-2.1 as the newest and current profile for RGB slash 8. Keep in mind that if you're using a Mac, you may find that the Adobe RGB 1998 works better for you. That's just related to color discrepancy issues with Macs. I'm using a Windows computer, so I will be using this option. Once you have your settings set, you can go ahead and click create. You'll notice that my layout is tailored. It might look a little bit different from yours. Um, your layers and effects and assets panels are most likely somewhere over here in the uh, sidebar. You can of course click and drag on them to align them anywhere you would like them or have them floating. If you don't see a panel like your layers or effects panel, simply come to view, studio, and then make sure to find that panel and, and make sure it has a check mark next to it. If it has a check mark, that means that it's somewhere on your document space. So if you has a check mark and you don't see it, just look a little bit closer and I'm sure you'll find it. 
we want to make sure we have our move tool selected. That's our a little cursor looking tool in the top of our tools panel. Next, we're going to go to file and place, and we're going to choose one of those sand textures. Now I want one that has a little bit of texture to it. So I'm going to choose this one that's, you know, sort of like the waves just washed it away kind of thing. Not the one that's been walked all over like some of those other textures. We're going to click and drag to fill our space and go until it's completely covered. I always like to center things. That's just the way I am. I know that it's centered because I see that red and green snapping guide along my horizontal and vertical axis. You can activate your snapping guides by clicking on this magnet icon and selecting that little drop down arrow and making sure that all of these are check marked. Don't check show snapping candidates. You don't want that one, just the rest of them. Now, um, you don't have to have the snapping guides on. If you prefer, you can also just use your alignment tools. You'll see this little icon is your alignment panel. And when you click on that, you can also just simply click the center um, and center for align vertical and horizontal and click apply. Next, we're going to come to layer and choose new fill layer. We want to select our color panel and we want to choose a soft sort of sand like shade. So I'm going to go with something pretty light. Notice I'm over in like between yellow and orange. Kind of going with like a soft peach skin tone almost. And right down here in the bottom, yours should probably say opacity, but if you click on it, on that circle, it'll switch over to noise. And I'm going to take the noise and I'm going to turn it all the way up to 100%. And you're going to get this grainy like fill to it. Make sure to select back to your move tool. And next we're going to lower the opacity on this layer. So with that layer selected, our fill layer will come to where it says opacity in our layers panel. Click on that little drop down and I'm going to lower mine 75% or so. You want to lower it enough that your texture is shining through, but not um, so much that it's going to be overpowering. We're just sort of combining those two layers to give us a the textured effect that we want for our sand background, but softening it just a little bit and making sure that we have a little bit of graininess to really work with. That was the point of our noise layer. So I've got mine right about 73%. I mean, 75% is probably fine. You'll just kind of have to eyeball it until you have this soft sand-like look. Now it's time to add our text. And I'm thinking I'm going to add like a little heart shape too, just for fun. Start by selecting your artistic text tool down here where the A is. You'll either see an A or a T. Just click that little arrow, that little white corner piece and you'll be able to choose between them. We're gonna choose artistic text tool. Next, click and drag to start a cursor spot on your document space. Come up to your context toolbar and choose the font that you would like to use. I'm gonna be using that, was it sugar sand? I think it was sugar sand font for this. And I don't know, we'll just write something really cheesy that we would see in the sand, something like love forever. And I'm just gonna center that really quickly. Um, there's a bit too much space in between my paragraphs or my two lines. So I'm going to select my paragraph icon right there and just come to where it says leading and I'm just gonna enter in a lower number. I think that'll work. I just went with like 160. All right, I'm going to go ahead and center that on my document space and now select my heart shape tool. So you'll see some type of shape right here. It might be a circle or a rectangle. Just click that little um, white corner and it'll pop out your whole menu. I'm going to select the heart tool. And I want to click and drag to cover that over my document. Currently, it's filled with my sand texture, which is not really what we want, but I'm going to center it first. 
and then come over to my color panel and this lower circle is our fill and the upper circle is our stroke. So we can actually just hit this little swap option and then that lower circle, I'm gonna choose no fill. So I only wanna have a stroke fill color. And then we will come up to our context toolbar where you see this line next to stroke. And I'm just gonna give it some width until I'm reasonably satisfied with its thickness. Okay, we click off, we can see it a little bit better. I think that that's a good thickness. I know it's a little bit light. We're going to work on that. Don't worry. So I think that my thickness is good. Um, I want my heart to look a bit more hand-drawn. This is very perfect computer-generated heart. So what I'm going to do is select that um, heart tool again and see what kind of options I do have. We have this little option right here to increase uh, or decrease the middle of our heart. So I'm going to decrease mine just a little bit. It doesn't look like we have any more adjustments that we can choose from with our heart as a shape. So we're going to convert it to curves. You'll see that convert to curves option right there in your context toolbar. And then select your node tool, which should be right above the shape tool. Again, you might see your pen tool. You want to make sure you have the node tool selected. And then you can just kind of pull on these lines and move them around and manipulate the shape of your heart until it meets your satisfaction. So I'm going to just kind of bring mine in down here. Try and make it look like one of those really like cheesy hand-drawn hearts. Okay. I think it's pretty good. I'm wondering if maybe I should put my text on one line. All right, I've changed my text to one line just because of how my heart shaped up. I'm going to recenter everything because I'm compulsive. I just like things centered. I'm going to get my text uh, right about where the placement I would like it. And now I want to adjust the color of both my text and my curve. But I can go ahead and group both of these layers together so that all of the changes that we make will apply to both of them. So just hold down your control or command key and select both of those layers in your layers panel. Right click and choose group. Next, we want to come to our color panel. We want to make sure we have. Um, Oops, sorry. We're going to actually choose, open up our group and select our text first and adjust the color here. And let's see. We want something that's a bit more sandy. Um, we don't want it to be too orange or too dark, but we want it to be a little bit darker than what we currently have. So I'm just moving around in my color wheel here. I don't want anything too yellow. Okay, I think that sort of tanned skin look will look really good. And so I have that in my lower circle for the text, but I want to come back to that curve and I want to choose that upper circle. And then if you just switch over to swatches, you'll see it right under your recent. So we'll go ahead and select that so that they both match. Now to create our text in the sand type of look, all we're really going to do is group together some different types of effects. You can access effects by clicking on the little FX down here or by clicking on the effects tab here. For this one, I'm going to check the layer effects. So I'll get this pop out box because we're going to be applying multiples. First thing that we want to do is make sure that we check scale with object. That way, if we resize anything, all of our effects are going to stay at the proportions that they currently are once we apply them. The first one I want to apply is bevel slash emboss. So I'm going to click on that and make sure I check mark this. I do want to have this set to pillow. That is going to be the preferred option here. And I'm going to increase that radius up quite a bit. So I didn't go all the way up, but I went pretty far. We're also going to come to soften and I want to increase that soften. Mm, 
not quite halfway, kind of just got to eyeball it. Now you'll notice that our highlights and our shadows that are down here are really dark. They're not giving us the sand look that we want. So we need to adjust that next. We can start by adjusting the direction um, of our light source, which is what we do with this little circle here. So if you move this around, that little white dot, you're going to notice that it changes the way this effect looks. For this drawn in the sand look, I'm going to put it, uh, let's see. I want it in the middle, but I want it like in the middle and but sort of going into the like seven o'clock spot. See where it is? So we're in the middle, but we're kind of seven o'clock at the same time. Next, I'm going to come over here to my highlight option and I want to click on that white box and I want to adjust this color because I don't want white. I want this to be a sand color. So we're going to adjust it. You're really just going to eyeball it and you want to go with a light sand color. All right, so I've got sort of a light sand color. That is good there. And the next thing that I want to do is choose my blend mode and choose color dodge. So we're just going to change the blend mode from screen to color dodge. And I also want to lower my opacity. Uh, let's go about, I'm going to go about 40%. I think that's good. Next, we want to select the multiply or the shadow box where it says multiply and there's the black. Click on that little black box, click on the color, and this time we're going to be choosing a darker shade of, of brown tan sand. So you want to be definitely over in like the general dark range and you can increase the noise on this to about halfway or a little more than halfway. And we're going to change up that opacity just enough. I got it about halfway. We'll make it exactly halfway. There we go. So we've adjusted our opacity to 50%. So already we're starting to get that drawn in the sand look, right? Like you can see the way that that one adjustment or that one effect has given us a little bit of a bubble there, sort of bringing it together. Um, I do think we might need to decrease the radius just a little bit because it seems like my uh, edges were getting a little too far away. So I just lowered that down a little bit. The next adjustment that we are going to add is our outer glow. So we'll click on outer glow next. You're going to check this little box here so it can activate it. And again, we want our color to be more sandy than white. So we're going to choose just sort of a medium shade. And we are going to lower our opacity quite a bit down. We're going to move this radius way up. And then our intensity, we're going to go just a little bit above the middle. And our blend mode, we're going to click on that and we're going to select darker color. Now, if you can't see the outer glow very well, which it looks like ours is not quite there, we're going to make it just a little bit darker. All right, if you're ever unsure about something, just increase one of the sliders that would make it more prominent and that'll give you a better visual. So I just increased the intensity so that I could see it a little bit more. Um, obviously, I don't want it to be like that, but I'm going to just slowly walk my way back until I see about the look that I want, which really is looking like about 78%, maybe 80% to give me that edge along. So the outer glow is serving to give us that look like the sand has been pressed down in and it sort of has like a little edge. So that is good there. And then the next adjustment is, or the next effect, I keep calling them adjustments. The next effect is going to be inner shadow. So we're going to select that and we will leave this at multiply. We are going to lower our opacity down. Um, I want to increase my radius quite a bit up 
and I want to change my color. I don't want black. I want just like a nice dark brown sandy color. Try to avoid getting too close to the red, so I'm sort of in the middle there. Uh, let's see. I want to increase my offset. And I don't want the, the intensity too high, but I've got it about at 30% here. So when we zoom in, you can kind of get a better look at how our different effects are going together. And if we deselect them, you can sort of see the difference that they make without them. So the, the secret really is stacking all of these different effects together to get the results that you want. So once you have that set, you can go ahead and close that panel. We've got all of our effects in place. Now, the last thing that we want to do is just sort of adjust this so we get some of that texture coming in through our sand. We can do that by adjusting our opacity for that grouped layer. So we just come to our layers panel, choose opacity, and let's see. I think about 75% looks pretty good. And there you have it. It is really that simple to create a sort of uh, drawn in the sand type of look. And you can always come to some of your other layers and play around with them. So maybe this fill layer, you want to soften that a little bit more. So I bring that down to 50%. We're getting a little bit stronger look. However, I'm going to do the 50%. I might want to um, decrease the opacity on this a little bit as well, too just so that it blends just a little bit better. Um, you can, of course, always go in and adjust the color if it needs to be a little bit lighter or a little bit darker for that base color. But <clears throat> there you have it. I'm actually gonna undo that because I think that it took away from my aesthetic I was going for. So there you have it. It's really easy to create this drawn in the sand look in Affinity Photo. And as I mentioned at the beginning, you can also do this in Affinity Designer. Um, the steps are pretty much the same. The only difference might be that um, if you don't create a fill layer, you can just use your rectangle shape and follow the same thing. If you are ready to export this, you can just go to File and Export, and that will open up your um, options. You'll choose PNG and whole document and click export and it'll open your file explorer. Now, if you want to save all of this to, you know, use this particular file again, make sure you save your affinity formatted file and you do that just like you do with any other program that you use. You go to file and save as, and that's going to open your file explorer. You'll be able to save the affinity photo file and you'll be able to reopen it and come back in here in the future and, you know, choose to change this text or change your shape or whatever you want to do. Now there's one more thing that I want to cover with you. And that is if you were to choose to, if you wanted to somehow warp this using the warp tools. <clears throat> So I'm just going to right click and duplicate this so that uh, we have a backup. I always like to duplicate things just in case. So I'm going to deselect that little checkbox so that one is not visible. This grouped layer, before we can use our uh, warp tools, we need to rasterize it. So you're going to right click and rasterize. You want to uncheck preserve layer FX and click rasterize. This keeps the majority of your effects in place. Notice that you did lose some of them. Um, that's just a hazard of using these type of effects on vector layers. But then you can then come to your perspective warp tool and let's choose perspective tool. And let's say you were trying to make this look like it was like sort of, um, like you're standing and looking at it forward, right? We're trying to shift the perspective of the sand. You can adjust that and click apply for a whole different aesthetic. And that little bit of glow that you lost, if you did do that, you can simply select that layer, choose that effects, come to outer glow and adjust it and start getting those, those, uh, 
some of those effects that got lost on rasterization, you can get them back. Generally, I don't rasterize things um, because I don't want to lose the effects and work that I've done. Plus, I want to be able to edit them. Once you rasterize them, you can't just go and change the text again. So, But I did want to point this out because I figured some people might want to try and create like a perspective look with their drawn in the sand. So you do need to know that because if you just try and rasterize it without de if you two things if you try to just take your group and use the perspective warp tool it's going to rasterize it automatically and you're going to lose all of your effects that you just did and if you rasterize it and don't and don't deselect that preserve fx layer then you are going to lose all of your effects as well so just a little tidbit there for you if you give this a try, definitely be sure to show us some of that. We would love to see it. And I hope that this was a helpful technique for you to learn. Keep in mind that you can apply this in so many different ways, um, especially on items like tumblers or car coasters. This is a really fun technique to use with your text layers, your shape layers. You could even use it with SVG files that you've licensed places. So give it a whirl. Let us know what you think. We'd love to see your results. Be sure to post them in sub that um, so that we can all see how well you've done following this tutorial. Again, if you want to access the fonts and digital papers that I used in this tutorial, as well as thousands more, be sure to sign up for Creative Fabrica, or if you already have the membership, that's of course great. The link below will let you sign up for $1 for your first month. And if you enjoyed this look into Affinity Photo and want to learn everything so that you can use this software for all of your sublimation design needs, be sure to check out that Affinity Photo Digital Graphic Design Masterclass for Sublimation. The link is in the description. Use the code sub that to save $30. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you have a great rest of your night.